Hi everyone. In a previous video, we looked at how to get and install the MGC 400 series configurator utility. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a job file program for a 400 series fire alarm panel. This tutorial is very basic and is only intended as a quick guide. Let's get started. Once the configurator is installed and open, we can check our current version by clicking on help and then about. At the time of this video, the current version is V2.1.5. We can also see that this configurator works with panel firmware version V2.1.7 and above. Okay, let's start a new job. Click on the job menu item and then select new job. This opens up the create job dialog. Here we need to enter a name for the new job. We also have to provide information in the comments section. Next, select the model number of the panel you are using. In this case, we are going to use a 400 panel. Lastly, select the job template that will be used. Default for the 400 panel is UL. Click OK and let's get started with setting up our new job. On the left side of the screen is a job tree with the job details item highlighted. We can see the job info and version, along with options that can be turned off or on with checkboxes. This is also where we select the manufacturer sync rate for our NAC devices. Let's select Mercom's MGC 400 notification devices. Job tree items can be expanded. Clicking on the plus sign will expand an item showing more options. Base I.O. should be expanded so we can set up our NAC circuits and addressable devices. Selecting loop 0 allows us to configure the four onboard NAC circuits. Across the top are columns that can be expanded to expose more of a cell's area. The first column shows the circuit number of the four NAC circuits. The circuit type should be changed to strobe to allow the manufacturer's sync rate to be produced. Clicking in the cell allows us to modify the selection. The tag columns are used to provide custom information about a device or circuit. Tag 1 and 2 can accept up to 20 characters and will display on the panel's LCD screen. Clicking in the cell allows for editing. Let's configure and add devices to the addressable loop. Select loop 1 from the job tree. Currently, there are no devices configured. Let's add devices by right-clicking in the blank area and selecting Add Device. The Add Devices dialog opens. Select the type of device you want to add by clicking the drop-down arrow. We now see a list of the 4000 series addressable devices. The photoelectric smoke detector devices have two model numbers, the older 4010 and the newer 4011. Choose the model number you will be using on your job. Next, choose the type of mounting base for the smoke sensor head. Here we will choose a standard non-addressable base. Now, select how the device will be processed by the system when activated. For our smoke detectors, we will select Alarm Input. Lastly, we can choose how many of these devices we want to add to our job. Let's change the number to 6 by clicking in the Number to Add box and typing 6. Or use the up-down arrows to adjust the quantity and then select Add. The six new smoke detectors have been added to our job. Let's continue adding some more devices. This time we'll add two dual input modules. The model 4040 dual module and 4041 dual mini module are configured as the same device type. Adjust the quantity to two and click add. The two dual input modules are added to the job. Next, let's add a 4045 dual relay module to the job. Select the 4045 relay module type, adjust the quantity to one and click on add. For our last example, let's add a dual sensor photoelectric smoke with a 135 degree rate of rise heat sensor. We'll choose the newer 4021 sensor. Be sure to select the proper model to match your actual devices. For this dual sensor head, we'll choose an addressable relay base for installation. This will give us a programmable relay located in the base of this device. We can leave the quantity set to 1 and click on Add, and then close the dialog box. Our job has six photoelectric smoke detectors with device addresses 1.1 through 6.1. The dot one indicates the primary address setting. We can see our two dual input modules with the dot one primary and dot two sub addresses. Here is the dual relay module with relay contact one having its own point and relay contact two having the sub address. The dual sensor at address 10 has three points. The primary is the photoelectric smoke sensor. The dot two sub address is the heat sensor and the dot three sub address is the relay contact in the addressable relay base. 
Our little job has 10 physical addressable devices, but has 15 programmable points. Let's tag our devices so we know what and where they are. Address 8 will be used for an addressable manual pull station. This device has a factory installed dual input module. We'll come back to this device in a second and configure it properly. If you are installing the single stage pull station, typically used in USA installations, the dual input module needs to be adjusted as Class A wired. This is done by selecting the cell in the Options column and changing it from Class B to Class A. The dual module now only has one device point without a sub-address. The flag column will also now indicate the device is wired as CA or Class A. Now that we've defined our devices, let's tell the system what should happen if one of these devices is activated. We call this correlating. To add correlations to a specific device, right-click on the device and select Add Correlations. A dialog box opens where we can choose and add circuits that will trigger when the device we selected is activated. We can trigger signal circuits, relay circuits, display LEDs and output zones. Let's add three of the NAC circuits to our selected smoke detector. Highlight the circuit and click on Add. The circuit is removed from the selection box and is added as a correlation to the selected device. You can also double-click an item to add it directly. Close the dialog box and review your correlations. With the device highlighted, we can see the details about what has been correlated to it in the details area. Let's correlate our first floor elevator lobby smoke detector to trigger the NAC circuits and the alternate floor recall relay. Right-click on the device and select Add Correlations. Add the NAC circuits. In addition to the NACs, we want to add the alternate floor relay. Select the Relay tab and choose the relay in the selection list, highlight it, and click Add. Each of our alarm input devices needs to be correlated to the NAC circuits. We could follow the same process, selecting and adding correlations to each input device. A quicker way is to directly correlate the NAC circuits to the alarm input devices. Navigate to loop 0 where the NAC circuits are. When we highlight a NAC, the input circuits and devices that are correlated to it show in the details area. The two smoke detectors we previously correlated show here. Let's quickly add all of the alarm input devices to trigger all of the NAC circuits. While holding down the control key, select each NAC circuit so they are all selected. Right-click on the highlighted selection and choose Add Correlations. The Add Items dialog opens. Since we are correlating to a NAC circuit, the items we can add are inputs. On the Alarm tab, all of the available alarm input devices are shown. Holding down the Control key, we can select each of the alarm input devices that will activate the three selected NAC circuits. Here we notice that the valve tamper switch is in this alarm input list. We don't want this device to activate our NACs. It should be a supervisory type. We'll have to make that change. Continuing with the rest of the inputs, we select Add. All of the alarm input devices are now correlated to all of the NAC circuits in one step. Highlighting each NAC circuit reveals all of the alarm input devices shown in the details area that have been correlated. Let's go back to the addressable loop one and make the correction to the valve tamper switch. When the dual input module was added, the default process was an alarm input. We want to change this input to be a supervisory type, not an alarm type. In the type column, clicking on the cell allows for the process to be modified. In this case, we'll choose non-latch supervisory as the process type. We have a few more correlations to make. The primary elevator recall relay needs to be correlated to the second and third floor elevator lobby smoke detectors. To do this quickly, we can correlate these input devices directly to the primary recall relay. Right-click on the relay and select Add Correlations. Next, find and select the second and third floor elevator lobby smoke detectors and add them to the relay. The two elevator lobby smoke detectors have now been correlated to the primary recall relay. The last device that needs to be correlated is the relay base in the elevator machine room smoke detector. In our example, we only want the heat sensor in the photo heat 
to activate the relay base. Let's right click on the relay base and add correlations. Choose the elevator machine room heat detector and click add. The relay base is now correlated to the elevator machine room heat detector. If we look at the heat detector, we can see it has the previously correlated NAX, and the correlated relay now shows under the relay tab. That's it. We have just programmed a simple job using the MGC 400 configurator utility. In the next video, we'll connect to a 400 panel and load this job into it. Thanks for watching.